This is round 16 of the Blackstone Fortress. I've shuffled and set up the initiative deck. Doesn't look good. It looks like the Trader Guardsmen are going first, which could be really bad, actually. They're really close at hand. They could come running down this hall and just start gunning everyone down. Definitely a little nervous about that, but there's nothing to do but start, so I'll just roll for their action. And it is a six. Six on their action chart behavior table. Six. They're not in view, so they only sneak. We have really lucked out. Like, that is phenomenal. So that means that they have to move as close to the explorers as they can without being seen by the explorers. So these guys are okay. Now, interestingly, these two guys are moving from one Inferno token to another. Rules as written, I get to make an attack against them with a d8. And it's one hit, which means that one of them burns alive. And we're going to take the one with a flamer, <laughs> because I don't want them doing to me what I have done to them. That means Pius indirectly removed two wounds worth. So let's see if she can roll a two. No, she can't. She rolled a three, so she's not inspired by that. Which is fair. I mean, she doesn't even know what happened, really. Okay, so as Trader Guardsman turns go, best possible. Best possible move. That was great. You really whittled them down. Actually, you know what, though? They do get to roll for reinforcements. They roll at like an 8. There's a special rule, though, because there's no hostile groups over here. So we have to look at the number 4. It says re-roll. So uh, re-roll... Um, oh. And eight again. Wow, that's weird. So still no reinforcements. All right, so I think it's Pius Vorn's turn now. Pius Vorn, that means these tokens go away because her activation is now. And I, I warned you, I think. Did I say this aloud? Uh, I'm going to abuse that this, this mechanic because why wouldn't I? She has a one, six, and a six. I'm going to spend one of her sixes. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to spend, no, I'm going to spend one of her sixes, yeah, to place Inferno tokens, and then I'm going to spend one of her one. Oh, and, and this, this Overwatch obviously goes away as well. She no longer has that. She's been activated. Uh, so I'm going to spend her one so that she can then move one, two, three. And now she's got a six still, which I think I'm just going to... It seems weird to keep doing this, but I'm, I'm going to convert it to a 5 and just keep it as an overwatch. Because that is a really handy ability to have. Well, actually, you know what? I should check just to make sure. Yeah, no. Because with, with a 5, she can do cleansing flames. That, that's a good thing to have locked and loaded. And that's her turn. Next up is the hostile group 1, which is the little spindle drones. So rolling for their behavior is a 9. Spindle drone behavior table says that a 9, when hidden from view, which they are, is also a sneak. So they're going to move 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. I think that's all the, the figures that can... Yeah, I think that's all they can go. There's a little bit of a bottleneck there because nobody wants to be seen by Janus. So actually, again, really, really nice move for the baddies there. I couldn't have asked for a better for better rolls so far. Janus. You know, he's kind of preventing them from walking through fire, and gee, I would hate to discourage them from that, really. So he's got four activations, so I think he's just going to start Moving out, uh, he'll spend a two, one, two, spend a four, one, two, spend a four again, one, two, and now he'll spend a four to summon the maglev chamber here. And 
that's good, because that locks this into place, which is very fortunate. Uh, if you'll recall, there was a snag. I'll just remember that, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's exactly here. There was a snag in, in, in an earlier round because the maglev chamber got summoned without me getting to choose where it got summoned to, and that was a little bit annoying, but this time I've locked it into place. This is where it is. This is our target. And we're we're all in the right room, so things are looking good. Let's just do this. Two. Um, that would be seven for reinforcements for the ghouls. Seven, as we know, does not summon reinforcements. Three, three or, or less would summon reinforcements, so they're they're not there again. Oh wait, but we reroll because of the special rule. Uh, 17. So Taddeus. Alright, Taddeus has lots of dice. He's got a 6, which he needs to search. So he'll search. He'll draw a... I guess a resource card? No, a discovery card. The resources they get to purchase at, um, at Precipice later. And we've got a clue. That's great. That's a, a great card to have, because that's really what we're looking for, ultimately. We need clues to find the inner vault of the Blackstone Fortress. And so now Taddeus has two dice, with uh, which he can't... Well, and we need to remove this discovery token, because we've explored that. We've we searched it, rather. He'll spend his two to go one, two. He'll spend his three to go... One, two. He's in the back of the maglev chamber. I, I, I think, I think I can play this out. I think I can just, I think we can finish this now. I mean, ideally we can. I don't know what's going to happen. Obviously, I guess I should roll an event die first. Ten on the event die. On a ten, changing conditions. Draw an encounter card. If the card has a twist, it applies for the rest of the combat. If not, there is no effect. Okay, I can do that. Uh, encounter Negavolt Cultists. There is a twist. Noxious Fumes. In the event phase, after resolving the random event, roll the Blackstone dice for each explorer and hostile. On a 1, that explorer or hostile suffers one wound. That's kind of cool. I like that, actually. I mean, I don't like it, but, you know, it's, yeah, that's kind of neat. That's a cool idea. Okay. So I'm going to play this out, I think. I think we're just going to see if we can just finish it. Two, two, and five for Taddeus. Why did I roll for Taddeus again? I mean, he's in a maglev chamber. Give me that Overwatch. No, she, she's still in Overwatch until her activation, I think. Uh, two, five, and six for um, Pious Vorn. And then finally, a full activation set for the uninjured Jane Drake. That's two, three, five, and six for Jane Drake. And then, of course, there's also the Destiny die which uh, we lose two fours and two threes. How did I know? And we get to keep a five, a lonely little five there. Do my best to shuffle the initiative deck. I mean, really, I hope the hostiles go first again because I want them to walk through my flames. Uh, what I really don't want is for Pius Vorn to go first because then all of her effects lying in wait go away. I have not increased the threat level of these guys at all. Uh, I wonder if I, I've completely forgot about that. The threat level for a combat starts at zero. It increases by one if an alert result is rolled on the spindle drone behavior table. Okay, cool. I have not, have not forgotten or neglected it. It just hasn't happened. Pius Vorn is first. Of course she is. 
That's the worst possible, worst possible result. She loses everything. She loses her markers and her overwatch. Now, luckily, as I've said, <laughs> I'm going to abuse her ability. Luckily, it's a new activation turn, and she has a 4+. plus. So she is going to spend her 5+, plus to just replace the, the markers. Is that where I want to put them? One, so if they go one, two, well, who cares? let's not overthink it. She wouldn't, oh wait, she has to be able to see this, the, the places, that's right. Okay, so one, two. Now, of course, of course, they would just move this way, right? I mean, obviously, but then, but then everyone would have cover. Yeah, okay. So anyway, that's where she's placing them. Or you know what? I could have her move first, right? Yeah, I could have her move first, and then place the tokens. So, one, two, three, and then spend the five to create an inferno here and there. And that way I'm just, I'm just blocking off the space. Now they're not gonna, they're not gonna get that far though, are they? Well, I have no, I have no recourse. I mean, that's, that's really, yeah. Okay, that's fine. So, I'm going to take her a 6. I'm going to, guess what, convert it into a... Oh, wait, do I... No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take her 6, and I'm going to move her... 1, 2, 3 into the maglev chamber. What am I talking about? Oh, and... Janus Drake had a gambit that he could have done. Should I roll that now? Yeah, I'll, I'll roll it now, just because why not? Uh, well, he fails. Okay. Taddeus, the purifier... He could move... Uh, no, that wouldn't make sense. Okay. And then one the spindle drones. Let's find out what they do. Uh, 13 for the spindle drones. 13 on their chart says uh, that they just advance again. So that's... 1, 2. 1, 2. 3 is the traitor guardsman. This will be interesting. This will be interesting. Uh, so 1 for the traitor guardsman. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I can hardly, hardly anticipate. So they are hidden because they're not in view of any of the explorers. And on a one, they are just, they just hold. They don't move. I guess, you know, twice burnt, once burned, twice shy or something like that. I don't know. And then finally, Janus Drake spends any number of his dice to just kind of step into the maglev chamber, and we clear out of the Blackstone Fortress. We hurry back to Precipice. And that's where we'll go in the next episode. Go to Precipice, I'll show you how all of that works. It's really mostly, you know, administration, but it's gamified, it's cool, it's fun. So, um, that's what we're doing. Back to Precipice. That's one expedition complete. Thanks for watching.